moving funny, or they thought you could be cooperating, they wouldn't have no problem getting rid of you. And that's what happened to Thomas Dozier, who was Wayne Perry's friend, who he served time with in Lorton. And when he got out, he took care of him, remember, took him to that drug spot. Well, over time, Wayne started to feel that he couldn't trust Thomas Dozier anymore, that he wasn't sturdy, and that he probably was cooperating. So he needed to get rid of him. And he had a genius plan to do just that. Alpo and Wayne put the word out to the right people that Thomas Dozier was the one responsible for the death of Michael Salters. And those right people got it back to his nephew, Daryl Poochie Salters, who was groomed by his uncle in the drug game. And when he died, he was devastated and he wanted nothing but revenge. This actually did happen. Uh, Daryl oh, it worked. Oh, yeah. Uh, Daryl Salters, who was Michael Salters' uh, nephew, uh, almost within days of that meeting between Sean Branch and Wayne Perry in, in jail, yes, uh, went to uh, the uh, Benning Road uh, apartment complex that, uh, that uh, Tom Stozier was living in at the time and just shot him about 50 times uh, you know, with an assault rifle. And, you know, again, out in front of God and everybody, but of course nobody ever cooperated on it. But he didn't know that he was just a pawn in the game of Wayne and Alpo. Daryl Pucci Salters would later be killed as well, gunned down in the streets. Then it came time for another member of the crew to be dealt with, Big Head Gary, who was actually Alpo's right-hand man when it came to moving weight. But Alpo found out that Big Head Gary had plans to make his own connections and start doing his own thing without him. And they were getting a lot of money together. And Alpo, he didn't like them. So he decided to set up Big Head Gary. They called him up one night and said that they were about to go slide on the crew that they had been beefing with. They finally got the drop on him. And Big Head Gary, he was about to gunplay too. So he was with it and they picked him up in the Mazda van. And while they were headed to the spot to do what Big Head Gary thought was a hit, Alpo was driving and he looked into the rear view mirror and gave a head nod. And this was a signal to Wayne Perry to hit Big Head Gary. He pulled out the gun, put it to the back of his head and shot him multiple times. Big Head Gary never saw it coming. They were ruthless treacherous, apex predators. Wayne and Alpo, they were the kings of the city. And Wayne was the MVP, leading in all statistical killing categories. But it was only a matter of time before that empire started to fall. Because in November of 1991, Alpo Martinez was arrested under federal RICO charges. And when he first got arrested, Wayne actually sent word to the jails to protect Alpo. He had that much belief that he would stand tall and he wouldn't flip. Even though people close to Wayne tried to warn him about Alpo and told him that he needs to get away from him as quick as he can. One of those people being legendary 1980s hitman, Sean Branch, AKA Teflon Sean. Alpo, he actually didn't flip immediately. He tried to fight the government for a while, but after more and more evidence began to come in and it was clear that they had an airtight case, his lawyer came to him one day and told him, they're looking to give you the death penalty. And if they can't stick you with the death penalty, they want to give you the rest of your natural life. But they really want Wayne Perry. He's your ace in the hole. 
give him up, you may have another chance at freedom. So they were willing to make a deal with the devil, that being Alpo, and that's exactly what happened. And the plan was in motion to set up Wayne Perry and get him off the streets. Alpo called up one of Wayne's young soldiers, a man by the name of Jerome Kearney, and told him that he needed the Mazda van that they had used in multiple murders moved to another spot to hide it. Because, you know, at this point, they still trusted Alpo. Nobody knew he was snitching, so the young soldier agreed to move the van, but it was really a setup for the feds so they could have more evidence against Wayne. Now, according to the FBI, when they confiscated the van, they were looking to investigate a murder that had allegedly happened inside. But once they started running DNA tests, they found different types of blood and different DNA types. They started referring to the van as the murder van. Not too long after this, Wayne would be arrested on a humble charge. But once inside, he knew it was